Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be starting in a couple of minutes just waiting for a few more people to join in. Hi everyone. Um thank you so much for joining us today. I am Nandini, your host for the day. And welcome to Innovative Possibilities season 2. We're still going to wait for a couple more minutes for people to join in. In the meantime, I thought I'd tell you all a little bit about innovative possibilities. So this series um, of episodes is being put together to talk about the innovations that are happening in the design industry, to talk about the kind of status quo that is being challenged by pioneering brands, design agencies, and also to talk about how brands are doing all sorts of new things. to bring in better customer experiences in our last webinar we had an amazing um, very very insightful uh, conversation with kunal rawat the creative director of landor and fitch about the power of print um, and this is mainly because of the advancements that are happening in print technology he also showed us how there's been a complete shift in how you know print is perceived today compared to the conventional ideas around it and he showed us how there are some brands that are doing some phenomenal work around um around print specifically all right let's um start today's session the theme for today as we all know is the art of co creation and the idea of co creation doesn't need any introduction right we're all very familiar with what co creation is what collaboration is what working together is and we've all been privy to it in some form or the other some of us here all of us here so from all of us some of us here have been curious about it um some of us have tried it out a little bit have explored it and have burnt a few fingers in the process and um some of us and i'm guessing quite a few of you all are actually quite ace at co creation and you're maybe just looking at you know picking up a few tools here and there to add to your little co creation kit but whatever our individual journey has been in uh, co creation or individual experiences have been we all are here today because we all believe in the idea of co creation we all value it and we all see that um it brings in a lot of importance a lot of it plays a big role in how we function how our work uh, happens so in line with the broader unified goal of all of us today we have today an amazing uh, panelist of uh, uh, industry experts who are going to tell us their perspectives going to share their ideas with us on co creation and how to go about it so i think that's really what we all want to do uh, before moving on to introduce our amazing um, guests our amazing speakers i'd like to just tell you all a little bit about how we're going to go about this next one hour so first we have our first two speakers that is lulu raghavan and arna bre from uh, landor and fitch to share their ideas on co creation after that we're going to have guy bibi from hp indigo israel to share his ideas on co creation um in terms of print space post which we're going to open up to have a, a super interactive q and a session so i do encourage all of you all to keep dropping in your questions in the q and a keep uh, feeding in all your thoughts that you have because we love to have a very very rich conversation at the end also i would really love to hear your stories because i'm sure everybody's got some amazing um maybe not so amazing but a whole bunch of experiences with um with co creation so it'll be really great if you all would share those as well would love to talk about it whether it's good bad ugly whatever it is um because i think we all have a lot to learn from each other as well i'm sure i know i do so that's why i have my paper and my pen uh, ready to take notes from everybody's teachings so um, so do keep sharing your thoughts as well down here okay moving on i'd like to now introduce our first um, speaker lulu raghavan who is the managing director of landor and fitch and um, she's worked at um, landor san francisco new york london before she came to mumbai to establish the mumbai office she's got over 20 years of experience apart from that she's also been the host of uh, bloomberg utv's show uh, beyond logo and um, she's won many awards one eminent one being um india's top 50 uh, women 
in the space of uh, media marketing and uh, advertising by Impact Magazine. Our second uh, speaker is Arnav Ray, who is the creative director of Landor & Fitch with over 15 years of experience. And he's worked with a whole bunch of eminent uh, agencies like Ogilvy, JWT, Brand Union, and many, many more. So I'm going to now fade into the background and uh, let Lulu Raghavan and Arnav Ray share their ideas on co-creation. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Nandini, for that very generous introduction. I have two quick stories on co-creation, and then we're going to do a conversation between Arnab and me. He being the creative genius, he has lots of wonderful examples and thoughts to share, and I'm going to be the facilitator of that discussion. We'll have a rapid fire with Arnab, and then we'll have lots of questions that we'll probe him on as well. <clears throat> so two stories. For us, actually, this past year was the year of co-creation. If you look at the new Lando and Fitch identity, you'll see a large <clears throat> ampersand over there. Excuse me. And that ampersand is a fantastic metaphor. For us as a company, it was actually the coming together of two big branding agencies, Lando and Fitch, which until this past year were separate agencies. Now we are one integrated brand transformation company really focused on creating extraordinary by design. So that has been a real call to action and a drive for us, the ampersand. So integrating between ourselves, collaborating with our WPP sister agencies, and then collaborating with our clients as well. And Arnab will talk about this a little bit more. On the personal front, I've been reading a lot. I think COVID has impacted all of us hugely. Some of us went more inward. Some of us uh, were more productive than ever before. I turned to reading a lot. And one of the most fabulous examples for me of how co-creation can really save the world is the story of the vaccine and the discovery of the vaccine. And that all started with Jennifer Doudna. You know, the, I just recently read Walter Isaacson's biography of her. Uh, it's called Code Breaker. And it's the story of how scientists left their individual agendas and egos behind and came together in pursuit of this vaccine, which is going to save lives. I just thought that was a fantastic story. There's a lot of parallels between scientists and designers and the quest for individual glory versus co-created glory. And I thought that the chemistry prize uh, last year, which was awarded to Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dudna for chemistry, was a great metaphor of the different times that we live in. Of course, the backstory is much more uh, intricate and not as straightforward as it looks, but nonetheless, I thought it was a great story. <clears throat> so those were my two quick stories. And I genuinely believe that the art of co-creation is going to be more important than ever before. So let's start, Arnab, with getting to know you a little bit more, a rapid fire. You know, like I was saying, COVID has impacted creatives in very, very different ways. So on a scale of one to 10, Arnab, how would you rate your creative fire today? Uh, definitely, uh, Ken, I think the, the times have kind of actually, the challenge has really kind of, I think egged us on to kind of, you know, turn adversity into, you know, an opportunity. And that's what we're kind of surviving on and seeing, you know, different challenges, different opportunities kind of unfold. So definitely 10 for me. Wow, I'm really going to hold you to that, Arnab. 10. No awesome, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you a few paired questions. Yeah. Illustration or type and why? Type for me, I think I've always kind of been uh, more fond of type since my college days, since my younger days in terms of thing. I think the wonderful world of typography really fascinated me. And also what it does is tell different stories. So does illustration, but just type just edges a bit forward. Let's get a little bit more provocative. Print or digital? To be honest, both for me. As a designer, <laughs> can I say both, Lulu? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can cheat. Yeah. 
because, yeah, as a designer, I think both mediums, I would like to play in both mediums while recognizing that digital is the way forward. But at the same time, print is, you know, print is pretty much alive as you would have heard and all we all know. So definitely both for me. And here's a big one, Arna, before we get into the meat of the session, advertising or design? You've been in both. Yes. I think design, because uh, that's why I made the switch. I wanted to have the opportunity to, you know, lend my skills or thinking or, you know, the design skills at an earlier stage when the brand is being built. And that's what I always wanted to do. And I felt more and more as I worked uh, in my career. And that's why I made the switch. And yes, so it's designed for me. So Arnab, this word co-creation, like I was saying, is a curious one. And personally to creatives and designers, it could feel like anathema. Isn't it all about individual genius? Why are we even talking about co-creation? Well, that's a good question, Lulu, because I think that's, that's always a persistent one in terms of individual genius being guarded, you know, uh, and, and looking at things individually. I think the push and pull between individualism and collectivism, you know, will continue as the world pass on. But I would like to believe instead of moments of genius, rather than individual genius, moments of genius. And that's how I kind of look at it. And that does not need individual, why an individual genius really exists. It is after all a starting point in my point of view. I think individual genius is really the starting point. But when you know people come together, that starting point, that little one spark of an idea can really become something big and can you know really set, set the stage on fire if co-creation is done in the right way. So it's moment of genius for me. And I think it is critical to design because it allows new ideas to emerge. It allows you know, ideas to flourish and uh, also manifest into something bigger than we had really imagined. I think, I think that's, that's really the point like between individual genius and co-creation. I think that's, that makes a whole world of difference. It is important, but I feel it's just a starting point. So as a creative, when I'm building my portfolio, it sounds nice in theory and I, and I get it, mm. but when I'm building my portfolio or showcasing my work on my website, as a designer, I'm there to sell my creativity and my brains. Yes. So how do I market myself when I can't claim full credit for an idea? What is the impact of that co-creation and generous spirit on my individual portfolio? Yeah. No, I think uh, that's a good one. I think we have to be honest, right? But people and uh, when we when we kind of and I've faced it in the in my career as well and other portfolios, I think what we try to champion is what we kind of came up with, and uh, you know, uh, or that you know the spark of an idea that we had, or you know the early design which we thought of and kind of we can claim as original that, okay, I was an integral part of it or I was a starting point of this. But if I could be honest and say that, okay, this idea was you know taken notches higher due to collaboration, the right collaboration, I think we should not shy away from that. I think you can see that, you know, you can have a starting point, you can have the, you can be responsible and claim the whole idea or you know, thing. but yes, be honest about like, how to work in and made something bigger to, uh, through collaboration. I think that can, that can be honestly said in terms of when you're showing your portfolio to different people. And I think people recognize that, that at what point did collaboration really help the work to really be, right? So I think that, that definitely helps. That's a, that's a really good point, Arnab. Um, it would be great if you could shine the light on some of the examples where it's worked really brilliantly, where different sure. teams, different talents, different diverse perspectives have come together. And in my opinion, one of the most important things for co-creation to work successfully is to leave the ego outside the room, right? Absolutely. So, and that can be really hard in our business. Yeah. So where has it worked brilliantly? What can we learn? Yeah, I think great point, Lulu. I think that whole aspect of leaving your ego behind because, and I've kind of thought about this a lot, like how you can 
you know, put yourself behind you and let the idea become the forefront. I think when you're solving a brief or, you know, thinking of solutions, I think what helps is if you put the idea, the work in front, and if your kind of your uh, aim is to focus on the work and make it shine, then I think nothing should come in the way of making it shine. I think you should not be limited by your own resources. And I think that's the main thing. Like you can probably think this much, but then if you have the right collaboration, it can really go miles. I have actually put together a small deck, if you allow me to share the screen as to, you know, what I feel is some good examples of co-creation in different ways, you know, whether it's with clients or brands having co collab with uh, different brands. So I'll just share my screen and take you through. A yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it'll just bring, bring it to life for the participants. And by the way, everyone should drop in questions as we go along. You know, I can keep that in mind as we're having the discussion. Um, so yeah, I, some examples that really find uh, fascinating and which have really happened due to collaboration and somebody taking the idea forward and making it much bigger in terms of idea or execution or giving a larger platform. Uh, this is something that we had created last year itself. Uh, this is for a um, burger brand in Sri Lanka. Uh, for a cloud kitchen brand called Giga Foods, Fuller. But why I bring it up is really the starting point, co-creation with colleagues. And like, I feel that in, we wouldn't have come up with a, this brand idea of a delicious mess, really looking at, you know, uh, the joy of eating burgers in a different way and opposing, you know, the whole aspect of templatized burgers, like which we see in different brands now, uh, really celebrating that. And it was really a work of different people coming together to jam uh, and, and, you know, ideate. So Delicious Mess was really born out of not one person's kind of imagination, but it was, a, you know, a, a result of good collaboration between the creative, the strategists, the client managers, and that's when it was born. So we I feel that this was one that was quite interesting and, and a good aspect of a good example for co-creation with colleagues. I think co-creation with technology is something that's again imperative. And I think Guy will talk about this in some time. Uh, but again, like this is something that different brands with a Coke or Smirnoff, et cetera, have done. And, and the designers have used this aspect of getting technology on board to, to get the differentiation, to create the customization in, in meaningful ways. So again, I think being open to create co-creating with technology is very important. And that really helps you kind of champion idea, take it forward, make it bigger. I think we are all aware of this. Airbnb, uh, when it came out with its uh, new identity, it really gave it, you know, it was not guarding it. So you can see a brand which is not guarding its entity and kind of say that this is it and take it or leave it. But it gave it into the hands of people to co-create, to create their own symbol, tell, tell their own story because it was really about people in the end. So I think this was a brilliant example of co-creating with your consumers. So something from designer's point of view, something from brand's point of view, I think this all kind of falls in place in terms of what are the various ways uh, we can co-create. Again, I think this is a shining example of Burger King and we all know, uh, probably know about Fernando Machado, who is one of the most famous CMOs in the world. And especially because uh, the way he champions creativity uh, for Burger King, and he, that's what he's done, like in terms of pushing the boundaries, uh, collaborating with uh, different, uh, you know, agencies, and always pushing the boundaries to kind of come up with something new. Some this is the, you know, the Whopper, the moldy Whopper, and the you can see on the right hand side, uh, the Burger King, you know, the rebranding. Again, this was something done by Lando and Fritz Hamber. Uh, this is again something, uh, you know, innovative and. When we're talking about technology, I think it's also about people. Like we're talking about hyper specialists nowadays who help forward your idea, who help kind of bring it to life in different ways that you wouldn't have imagined. I mean, if you have a certain vision, that vision is enough to collaborate with people and bring it to life. This is again done by Patrick Hubner, a creative coder, who created this whole generative design for this wine brand uh, called Brute, done by Hamburg Office. So again, we all know Crocs in the end is it's, 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 it's a footwear brand, but how can a brand can keep coming up with different, you know, designs, 
different aspects of different variabilities uh, within to keep it engaging, keep it keeps keep it something new. So then, this is something we're talking about like how Crocs collaborates with different brands and people over time to really you know make it fun, make it enjoyable, and extend the portfolio. So here's some of the examples, Lulu, that uh, felt that you know could be a good example. Uh, good examples in terms of co-creation and shine the light on how different ways you can, if you have a certain vision, uh, you know, that moment of genius rather than individual genius, you can really take it forward uh, by looking at co-creation in different ways, really about opening up your mind to possibilities. Yeah, I've actually just dropped the brute um, URL so everybody can see that. I think that's a really good example of digital which intersected with print, you know, on the packaging, but the algorithm is the one that's actually designing the plethora of possibilities. So that's a really cool example, Arna. You know, some people are saying that post COVID, <clears throat> everyone is rushing to embrace digital. Of course, digital has come to the fore as the most effective way in which you can engage your consumers. But have we are now become too prescriptive of what the end solution should be? Is there a scope to broaden the aperture? Can the art of co-creation take us on a different path? Because everyone's rushing down this digital, digital path. But there's so much to life beyond digital. And as Kornal so beautifully expressed in his prior presentation, print is not dead. What are your thoughts on how co-creation can prevent this mad embracement or embracing of just digital only, but truly have a medium agnostic approach to innovation? Yeah, uh, Lulu, I think, you know, like in the digital is really what has become a strategy, right? Uh, and data tells you whom to kind of approach, who are your consumers, what kind of messaging they like, what kind of, you know, how, what you want to put. So that really kind of brings, I think, uh, this whole aspect of draws like tighter boundaries uh, in terms of your creative solutions. You can, can't think beyond, like even as some brands stand out, one of the biggest challenges is really the sea of sameness. What's happening in digital, right? It's a sea of sameness uh, that's really plaguing the medium. So as brands grapple with platform specs and guidelines, I think media efficiencies, costs, social clutter, et cetera, deals, offers, I think there's the problem of prescriptive messaging from data-driven aspect really is like a bummer. Like, I think we need to go beyond that. What I feel here, and if you're just talking about digital, because obviously there's a print medium, but specifically from a digital point of view, how do you kind of disrupt or how do you kind of break that thing, even if it's kind of data-driven or targeted? I think co-creation can help blend digital domain expertise the goodness of design. I think that's why design and co-creation. So if you if you are collaborating with, uh, you know, the domain experts, and you are a design expert, if you collaborate well, I think you can really create a difference, right? And it'll allow us to combat that clutter that's happening there, and uh, you know, build thumb-stopping uh, media content. Etc. that can really stand out and become memorable uh, for people. So I think even in terms of digital, I think, of course, like in terms of ideation, we don't need to be medium agnostic, but if the medium is digital and the ask is digital, I think there are ways to co-create, collaborate, to create something that is, uh, that really catches your eye in this, you know, this plethora of, you know, your scrolls and different, and they want to look same. How do it, I think the way to kind of do it and make that disruption happen is when you really collaborate well, co-create and see that, okay, how can we break this kind of mold, right? That we're getting into. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Let's focus on the last five to seven minutes. And then I think we need to hand over to, to Guy. Um, on designers and creatives, one of the questions that's come through is how are you able to cope with the COVID situation and stay creative throughout? Uh, you know, I, I put it in one of the other responses. I'm a huge fan of Todd Henry's work. Todd Henry calls himself an arms dealer for the creative generation. Uh, he's published many, many books. And one of his most brilliant books is The Accidental Creative. And in that, he talks about the rhythm 
the practices, the discipline of the kind of stimulus that you need to fill your mind with and the kind of reflection and journaling that you have to do for the dots to collide in your mind to create those innovations. And you still have to say positive, a lot of gratitude journaling to get through hard times like COVID. How did you, Arna, cope with COVID? And then what is your advice to designers to really open up to what we've been talking about, which is co-creation, right? How do, especially the younger folks, uh, interns, junior designers, how do we even start to approach co-creation? Well, uh, I think as Lulu, you know, like my journey at Lando and Fitch started with COVID, like in terms of not even, not even going to office and starting my first day from like, you know, working from home. I think for me personally, I think the the exciting new challenges, the brands, what they offered and what kind of, you know, you know, the challenge that they offered to, you know, kind of come up with solutions, be creative every day, you know, keep that hunger alive. I think that's something that kept me going. I think the newness, that thing, you know, getting up every day. Yes, it has challenges in terms of suddenly you're in a new environment, you're in a restricted space, you're not meeting your colleagues, you can't just turn around and, you know, jam, you know, like the, like the way it, 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 it is or the way it used to be or what it will be. But I think the main thing was this thing of uh, exciting opportunity every day when it comes to, you know, the briefs, uh, when you come to different challenges or, you know, finding new solutions for different challenges for the clients. I think that really helped. I think also connecting and take, being proactive uh, in connecting with your team members, with different people. I think one thing that, you know, the work from home situation could really put you in a silo, right? And you don't feel like connecting. It's, it's like becomes like a bubble. But I felt that, again, being reaching out, being proactive uh, in kind of connecting with people and, and taking that extra step really helped uh, to keep the conversation alive, though it was on screen. But I think that aspect of keeping the conversation alive and, you know, jamming and, you know, seeing what can be done and connecting beyond work also, I think that was important. And that's what some of the stuff that really helped kind of, you know, keep the fire burning. It, it obviously, I think it's easier said than done. Yeah. But it has its own challenges. But I uh, think I think designers also, Arnav, um, you know, we were talking about this the other day, really have to market themselves better. You know, sometimes the portfolios that we see, if you're out there looking for great opportunities to co-create, to work with agencies. You know, what are your thoughts on your own website, on how you put your portfolio together, and dare I say the word, your personal brand, right? For designers and creatives, how does this all come together to enable them to seize these opportunities for co-creation and innovation? Yeah. I think the main thing, I think the key ingredient is hunger, Lulu. Being ambitious, being open to ideas, and putting your work out there in the best possible way is something that really is in, uh, a key ingredient to kind of making your work shine and you know attract opportunities. I think if if designers are ambitious, opportunities will find their way somehow or the other. I think uh, and now more than ever, it's just really a thought, a click, and uh, probably a Zoom call away, <laughs> right? So uh, I think. Yeah. Definitely, that's, that's something to keep in mind. Sounds good. So last question, Arnab. What's the future looking like from where you're sitting for designers and for creatives? I think the future is definitely bright and limitless. I think, uh, I think we have realized you know, our capabilities. I think we have gone beyond our capabilities uh, through this coming out of this challenge, I think. And so I think we should take it in the positive way and like, look at the future being something that we feel is limitless. Even this, it's become boundaryless now. Uh, yes, we'll go back to our physical spaces, but I think that mentality and that hustle, I think is important to keep in mind. So I see people going beyond their own limitations by through co-creation, I think challenging the status quo, you know, bringing together super talented people to create extraordinary work. <clears throat> and I see big ideas coming to fusion and moving things 
shaping cultures and all of this being really possible through the art of co-creation. I think just being open to it and uh, giving it a little hustle and having that desire and drive, I think will, will kind of make sure the future is kind of certain and uh, we can make it work. Awesome. I really like what you said. I'm going to take it away as H ampersand O. So H ampersand O is hungry, which I think beautifully encapsulates the spirit that you have to have going into any project to be extraordinary, to challenge the status quo, to really make a difference. But that hunger has to be paired with this openness for it all to come together because you can be hungry and super arrogant and nobody's going to want to work with you but an open warm welcoming inviting spirit is what's required so hno i really like that that was awesome arnav let's turn over to gi for his guy sorry for his uh, session and then there are lots of q and a's that are questions that have come through we can come back and answer those as well Thank so you. over to you guys Thanks so much, Lulu. Thanks a lot. It was very interesting. Thanks a lot for uh, for the great session. Um, I, I I loved seeing your presentation. I kind of feel uh, weird showing mine afterwards, but I, I hope you like it. Uh, so great job, guys. So uh, I'll, with that, I'll start. Uh, my name is Guy Bibi. I am uh, the um, product manager in HP Indigo, and I'm in charge of all of the all the creative tools and all the tools uh, for variable data or for data that changes between packages, if it's uh, words, images, etc., we'll discuss this in in very uh, detail. Um, just a little bit about myself: I studied graphic design uh, in Israel in an academy in Israel, uh, and I studied in in an art uh, studio, uh, which I'll discuss as well. Uh, and from there, I started doing some UI and UX work for HP Indigo in terms of these uh, these solutions. And uh, three years ago, I, I uh, transferred to the marketing team to be the product manager of these tools. Um, and so this is what I'm doing today. And I'm, I'm, I'm really loving the fact that I'm handling brands and agencies and working with creatives such as yourself to... Uh, a, manage those tools and make them better, and B, come up with new ideas and new tools to really give this world uh, a lot of openness. And, and we'll discuss the tools that we have today, but also the tools that we are uh, going to develop or are developing right now for the future. So with that, I'll start. Uh, and I'm beginning with this uh, little image. And usually, this is what we see in magazine stores, right? When we print a magazine, usually we have a stack of the same magazine over and over again. Um, and the question is why? Why do uh, we, why are we, uh, um, um, you know, why do we, we uh, make ourselves print the same thing over and over again, the same mold? So the answer for that is, first of all, knowledge, and second of all, technology. Now, with that story, I'm going to share with you uh, the time that I worked in the art studio. Uh, I worked in that art studio for eight years, um, and it's actually the first art studio in Israel. It uh, it's actually was developed or was formed before the state was even born. So it was uh, it was uh, uh, formed in 1940, and, and this was a great opportunity for me because this was a very manual. Uh, studio where, as you can see, people uh, uh, took the scissors and glue and started creating their own molds and their own designs. And then we manually created uh, all, all the print work and, and sent it to print. And my boss then, Danny, who was uh, 80 years old when I started working there, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, he was actually uh, very intrigued with computers. And I actually was the first person to bring in a computer to this studio and to me to see how he reacted to a computer uh, was mind changing. And I remember one time uh, he sat in his office with mockups that look, uh, looked like this. And, and he asked me, Guy, can you do me a favor? Can you print this cat for me in 40 different colors? And I said, yes, let, uh, give me like two to three hours. I'll create all the cats with the new colors and I'll print it for you. And he looked at me and he said, can't you just tell the computer to do it? 
Uh, and to me, it was mind changing because uh, now today, this is exactly what I'm doing as a product manager of these creative tools. This is what I'm doing day, uh, day after day. I'm telling the computer what to do and the computer is doing it for me. So if Danny uh, came to me today and asked me, guy, can you print those cats for me in 40 colors? I, I could have said to him, you know, give me five minutes. I'll print 40 cats, 40 dogs, 40 aliens, whatever you want in as many colors as you want, because it's as simple as that. And it's a good transition to the tools that we have. So the first tool that we have is what we call variable data printing or VDP. And it's basically a very simple tool to take a database or an Excel sheet or any form of data that you have made be textual or image, and then put it on a predefined design. For example, this L magazine that you see here uh, has a database attached to it and every consumer gets this L magazine with his name on top of it. If you remember, we did the same with the Coca-Cola bottles that every bottle had a different name. We, we did this with Nutella that every jar had a different name and we are leveraging this over and over again. Again, this is the most simple uh, form of variable data printing. The more advanced one is uh, actually something that Arnab showed uh, earlier. This is what we call mass customization. And we have many tools to do mass customization that can take any design. You put a bunch of parameters on it and then you can create millions uh, without even doing any design work. You're just simply telling the computer what you want to do and he does it for you. Now, these are just the software parts of, of what we have. We also have the realm of the, the hardware, which is the presses that HP is creating. And those digital presses are so fast and, and so uh, agile that you can take it to any length that you want. So for example, you can uh, have an idea or a brief uh, today, but tomorrow it can be already on the shelves. And we've, we've done things like that in the past. You can target different markets. You can have different uh, languages. You can try things on the shelf without uh, going you know, globally uh, and, and risking uh, uh, timelines, etc. You can do whatever you want. The second thing that we have, which I think is the most amazing one, is the fact that, uh, that our presses are unique. They can create pieces of art that are unique as Picasso is painting with light here. So every second he moves his arm, new artwork is being formed, right? Some old light disappears, some new light comes in, and then every minute or every second is a, is a piece of, uh, of unique art. And, and exactly, uh, uh, this is the same thing as, as, the, as the HP presses because every sheet that comes out of the press can be totally unique, can be numbered, and you can even leverage this uh, to campaigns. Now, if you take all of these tools together, every product has a unique fingerprint. So there's no reason in the world why the magazines that we saw earlier won't look like this, right? So you can have a shelf with the same magazine, same issue, but all different covers, all different content, with different names, if you have different barcodes, anything that you want, you can do it on the same uh, cover. Any questions so far, or uh, can I uh, continue? No, we, we can continue, Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, how can I do it? I mean, what does it take you as a designers to do it? And actually the answer is very, very simple. You simply need the application and I'll share the, uh, the link with you in the end. But basically you can see all of these ideas and you don't need to be any uh, Coca-Cola or Nutella or any big brand or, uh, or a big uh, uh, for, uh, firm house to create those tools. You can install it on your home computer, play with it, understand it and create ideas for, uh, for future products. Now, one thing I really like about the realm of HP Indigo is that to me, as the uh, product manager of the creative tools, all of the creative tools are stars, right? We have Mosaic is a star, and we have Collage is a star, and we have Spark, which is a star. But we also have World of Inks, we have Silver Inks, we have White Inks, we have Transparent Inks, and Fluorescent Inks, and really it's 
a world of its own and every one of them is a star. We also have media, uh, different papers and different finishings and you as creatives are forming the constellations. And I really love the analogy of constellations because you as creative can take all of these ideas, create a constellation that we have never seen before. Uh, and, and that's what I want you to take out of these uh, examples because each of them is the same tool, but totally different scope of, of idea. So the first tool that I'm gonna discuss with you is called HP Mosaic. And HP Mosaic is a very, very simple tool. Basically what you can do with it is you can take any original artwork, you put a bunch of parameters on top of it and you get an output of unlimited amount uh, of, uh, of different products. As you can see, all of them are derived from the same image. Now, each of these cans that you see here is unique. So uh, no can will ever look the same and you can even play with it because uh, Mosaic creates the image randomly, but it's not really random, it's just pseudo random. So you can always recreate the images that you've or, uh, already created. So imagine you go to a store, you buy a can, you have a number on top of it, and then you can go to the website, type in the number, get the same design back, and then you can order it on a, on a t-shirt, on a bag, on a, an iPhone cover, on wrapping paper, whatever you want. It's your design and it's numbered. So you also have a unique piece of art. Now, what are the parameters that we have? We have uh, different cropping areas. So you can map the transposition or where you want to be, uh, the image to be cropped. You can select the rotation if you want it to rotate or no. You can uh, uh, put the minimum and maximum scale so that the design will be uh, scaled in or scaled out. And you can also select different colorations. So if you have a design, you can either shuffle the colors within themselves or select a new uh, set of colors so you don't need to redesign uh, different or, or the same image with different colors. For example, uh, uh, Arnab showed the Smirnoff campaign and the Smirnoff campaign was very beautiful, uh, but they wanted to take the same design and do it for Christmas. Instead of redesigning everything, they simply gave an another palette of colors and the same design changed automatically to the uh, new palette of colors. So this is a great uh, tool and very, very beneficial. If I take you to a campaign, so we did a campaign with uh, Sony Fest, and Sony Fest is a watch that is built with e-paper, which is like Kindle. And because it's e-paper, you can change both the, the uh, you know, the head of the, of the watch, but also the wristband. So imagine you can change the entire look and feel of this watch every minute of the day. And this is what they did here. They created uh, an image, as you, as you can see on the left side, we call it a seed, a seed file. And from the seed file, once you put the parameters, you can have endless results for the watch. And so they created an image for every minute of the day. And when they did the launch of this watch, they actually printed posters for every minute of the day. And then they put them together in this uh, very nice uh, um, exhibition hall. And people who bought the watch got the poster that matched the time that they purchased the watch themselves. So they have a unique memento of the watch that they bought with the time that they bought it in. They also created something really nice. Remember we talked about constellations. So this is a constellation where they wanted to show that all the posters formed 24 hours. They printed black ink on black paper to give you the spiral look. So when you place the posters one next to the other, they gave you a full image. And this is a really, really beautiful uh, um, exhibition uh, um, you know, magnet. People loved it and, and was, were really ecstatic to see it. Another great example uh, is this magazine. It's called the Mohawk Makerly Cor Maker Quarterly. And it's actually, uh, it's kind of like a design uh, magazine but uh, it, it, was, it, it had struggles uh, selling. So what they did is they went to uh, one of the most fa famous artists in the United St uh, States and asked them to create a unique piece of art for, for them. And, and once they ha had it, they put it inside the mosaic 
and every magazine had a unique poster signed by the artist and also numbered. So you have a unique piece of art from your favorite artist that no one in the world has. And the funny thing is that nowadays you can go into uh, Amazon or sorry, eBay, and you can find it online resold over and over again. Now, both examples that we've seen so far were done only with one seed pattern, one design. But Mosaic does not limit you to just one design. You can have as many as you want. And in this example, they created uh, 1 million different chocolate wrappers with only 16 designs. So they created those 16 designs, they printed them out and wrapped the chocolate bar. So imagine you going to the store, you purchase the uh, wrapping that you like. Once you open it, they actually printed on the backside instructions on how, of how to fold this unique piece of paper into an origami cow. So first of all, you have sustainability here, right? You're not throwing away the package that this was printed on. And second of all, you can leverage this to a campaign. This is really co-creation uh, in, uh, uh, in its entirety, right? You can engage your customers to take their cow, take a picture of it, upload it, to social media, and then you can create a really big buzz uh, out of these uh, um, uh, uh, cows and the, the campaign and, and sustainability, uh, and you can really uh, tell a story through it. So let's see a very small uh, fragment of how it looked on TV. Another great thing about this campaign is that the product did not change at all. Only the, the wrapping paper or wrap, what is wrapping it changed, the design changed. The company uh, for this specific campaign charged more money for these chocolate bars. So imagine you as a brand, you can charge more for something that you do already. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have a question for uh, Lulu and Arna. Um, so we have this question from Ritika Singh who asks us that how um, can co-creation, um, how is co-creation important for a freelancer? Uh, for a freelancer, you said, right? Co-creation important for a freelancer. I think, I think, uh, there is nothing stopping a freelancer to co-create. I think uh, it's just in terms of collaborate. I think it's even more easier and kind of more imperative where, where if freelancers, where if you're working with an agency or you're working, you know, collaborating with others, I think it's all depends on the ask of the brief, right? Or the ask. I think if it demands it, then there's nothing really stopping. Uh, and I think it's imperative and it just takes the idea further. I think as freelancers, sometimes, you can end up working in silos even more so because you're not really going to an office and meeting people, etc. I think it helps open up, you know, avenues. It all helps open up the mind more. So I think it's even more kind of if you find those opportunities to collaborate, I think grab it. Then it's really worth it, and I'm sure it'll be enriching. I think it's very important, Nandini. You have to put yourself out there as a freelancer because the kind of opportunities that you may attract mm. through co-creation would be those that you might never have as an individual designer. So being out there on social media, in the relevant forums, commenting, participating, adding value may help someone spot you, identify you, identify your talent and say, hey, you know, I really want to work with you. And so, yeah, as, as a freelancer, I totally agree with Arnab, even more important. Right. So um, we have another question that um, what are the tools for effective brainstorming um, and mind mapping with collaboration while working from home? Any suggestions? We use, we use Miro a lot. We used it with clients as well. It's really effective. Even with senior decision makers, you could 
collaborate together. There's so many different uh, techniques you could use. So our favorite is Nero, uh, which we've used quite a lot. Designers love it, but we've been able to get our clients to open up their minds to it. And you know, we, Nandini, we never did so much collaboration as we've done during the pandemic because it's so easy. Uh, and you can actually see the work progressing. I think feedback on work is also much easier through uh, tools like Nero. Right, right. Great. And um, I think we have, we have many questions, but since we are running out of time, I think I'm going to just limit this to the last question. Um, and I think we, uh, we'll answer the rest of your questions via mail um, to the participants. So we have one more question um, to Lulu. Um, they say that, um, consider you are allocated with a brand name project of a newly launched product. What will be your process um, of starting from team building to work allocation and timelines and things like that? And I feel like the reason why I find this question <clears throat> interesting is because um, in the space of co-creation and collaboration, these are certain things that also uh, need to be kept in mind. So from that perspective as well. Wow, brilliant question. Never been asked that question before. Um, I think, the first is really collating, curating a diverse team. Strategists, designers, maybe an artist, maybe an anthropologist. So who's the right team that can work on this? Maybe one step before that is problem definition, appreciation of the brief. What is the opportunity or the brief? What is our understanding of it? What's the real problem we are solving? Not the presenting problem, but the real problem. How might we reframe that problem to really open up the possibilities? Guy was talking about what if, right? How do you even deploy that at the problem definition stage to define the problem really well? Once that's done, it's all about deep immersion with the consumer to draw insights upon which a big idea will be based upon. It's the coming together of the creatives and the strategists to collaborate and co-create the big idea, which is the foundation of the brand strategy. That then is a springboard for design, design principles, the design strategy, which in our world then leads to all of the elements of the brand, the visual identity, the verbal identity, the sonic identity, the moving identity. It's the foundation of how the brand looks, how it feels, how it talks, how it dreams, how what it actually does. And that's then codified into principles for the brand, which are taken forward by whoever is working on the brand. So starting with putting the team together, really interrogating the problem or the brief, spending time, real consumer insights or customer insights, which become the basis of a big idea, which leads to the entire visual verbal 360 world of the brand, which then gets codified in guidelines, which can be used by all stakeholders. Fantastic. That makes, now that you, you know, break that apart for us and make sure the step-by-step -step process, now it makes sense that actually co-creation does is necessary because um, everybody then can play to their strengths. Everybody can bring in their best to the table. And uh, it even reminds me of what Arnab showed um, in his presentation you know, about co-creation with colleagues, with technology, with brands, with specialists, with clients, because everyone's bringing their best to the table and uh, yeah, taking the brand to the next level. Fantastic. You're okay. so right, Nandini. I think just one last thing on that is a mindset. We haven't really talked about it. We haven't used that word explicitly. It's been implicit in everything that Guy, Arnab and I have said, but it's a mindset. And I really love what Arnab uh, brought to the table, which is that humbleness, mm -hmm. uh, hunger, not humbleness, but hunger and openness with a what if, uh, you know, mindset can really unlock the possibilities, I believe. Definitely. Even the idea of um, individual being the beginning and um, as collective moving, um, you know, to the way forward being collective, that does make sense with co-creation. That does make sense with even what Guy was saying in terms of how um, he co-created with the other brands, how they came up with all these different um, 
different permutation combinations, which is not possible at an individual level for sure. It's time to bring a close to this session. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Thanks so much. Today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. Look forward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And have a wonderful rest of Tuesday and wonderful week. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody.